Am I correct that you remain the only member of the body who has also served on a Supreme Court, in your case, the Supreme Court of Texas? I believe that's correct, yeah. So with that background, um, you voted yesterday against proceeding with the impeachment trial. Why? Well, I I voted for the point of order that, uh, that uh, Senator Paul proposed. This is an unprecedented impeachment trial, as you know. Never has it happened before in American history. And there's no clear path forward as, uh, in the Constitution or laws themselves. Uh, as you know, the Chief Justice is not presiding. The Constitution provides that when the President of the United States is tried in a court of impeachment, the Supreme Court the Chief Justice shall preside. So this is kind of like making it up as we go along here. And I, I have some very serious concerns about the legitimacy of this whole process. Now, Senator Cornyn, I and Judge Littig and Alan Dershowitz and Professor Turley have argued for weeks now it is unconstitutional to try a former official, and it is not something we want to begin to do. There is one contrary um, uh, uh, example from the 19th right. century when a former Secretary right. of War was tried, but I believe many senators changed their mind about jurisdiction thereafter. Do you believe it's constitutional to try former officials? Well, as you know, in uh, Federalist 65, Hamilton says that impeachment is really uh, uh, different than anything else, and it's essentially a political process. I, I, but I think just from a prudential standpoint, even if you would say that this is permissible, I think it's a terrible idea and a terrible precedent. This means that uh, if a Democratic majority in the House and Senate can try a former pr Republican president, it means a Republican majority in the House and the Senate could try a previous Democrat president. I think that's a terrible idea, and we shouldn't do it. They could try any former official. Now, I speak as a former official. I have been confirmed in, in 1988. I don't ever want to be tried, but James Comey could be tried. John Brennan could be tried. Any former official could be tried by any double majority. It is a disaster. I agree. And at a time when uh, President Biden talks about unity, while he's issuing uh, executive orders after executive orders. I mean, I think it's uh, obviously the Democrats are trying to figure out how to manage uh, their bare majority in the Senate and, uh, and, 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 and appease their progressive uh, radicals on the left. But um, I think President Biden would have a friendly ear in Republicans if he tries to come back to the middle and work with us in the best interest of the country. But this is not it. Now, Senator Jonah Goldberg, who's a friend of mine, and I respect a great deal, tweeted out yesterday, Hugh, if it were a secret vote, a majority of the House and Senate GOP would vote to impeach and remove. They aren't taking this position out of fidelity to the Constitution. I doubt even Lindsey Graham and Rand Paul believe what they are saying. So in essence, at the end of a quote, in essence, Jonah's going full Kreskin. Is it fair? <laughs> Is it accurate? Well, I like Jonah, too, and I follow him closely because he's a very smart guy. But I just disagree with him here. Um, this is a matter of conscience. We all take an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States. And that means even in cases where it's unpopular. And uh, so we have a duty to do that, whether it's public or private vote. Uh, so I disagree with him. Now, here is uh, my old colleague from debate days, Jake Taper on CNN, Jake Tapper on CNN yesterday. Cut number eight. Bill Clinton lied under oath. And they thought that there needed to be... He needed to be removed from office for lying under oath. Donald Trump incites a terrorist attack, and they have a different standard. Your assessment of Jake's assessment, Senator? Well, I think people are being very uh, loose with their language here. Um, uh, the, the president's been uh, impeached for inciting, uh, inciting an insurrection, which has a very technical meaning. We know that there's a lot of loose language here in Washington, D.C. I think about Chuck Schumer over at the, uh, over at the Supreme Court saying that uh, to Gorsuch and Kavanaugh said, you'll never know what hit you. Uh, Maxine Waters telling anti-Trumpers to get in the face of people who support the president. I think we just need to realize that we need to temper our speech here because there are people who will take it perhaps much farther than anybody ever intended. But I don't believe the president intended to incite violence. I do believe he intended to try to try to influence the Congress during the certification of the electoral vote. Obviously, he wasn't successful doing that. Um, but I, I don't think you can also impeach somebody for 
speech that is protected by the First Amendment, which this may well be under Brandenburg versus Ohio. I've talked about that already, so I won't go over that. What Jake also said, Bill Clinton was impeached while he was in office, and the trial occurred when he was in office. Donald Trump, it's just factually different. And when journalists wade into the law, often they embarrass themselves. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. And I don't know whether Jake thought that impeachment of Clinton was a good idea or not, or he's just citing that as an example where somebody lies under oath. This is not lying under oath. I do think uh, President Trump was unwilling to accept the outcome in the election. I voted to uh, accept the certification of the Electoral College. I think that was the correct thing to do. But, um, yeah, there, I think a lot of these journalists are practicing, practicing law without a license. Now, let me, on on that last point, take up uh, your past as Supreme Court justice. Due process matters to Americans in almost every setting, whether it's workplace issues of dismissal or hiring, whether it is in a court of law, certainly when it's a criminal action, and it ought to matter in impeachment. Was the president denied due process, even in an impeachment setting, which is political, when the House did not allow evidence? And what in the world is this Senate trial going to do about evidence? Well, I'm, I'm waiting to see what the impeachment managers present, but you're exactly right. Due process is just another way of talking about a fair process, and uh, this has been anything but a fair process. What Professor Turley, as you know, has called a snap impeachment, they didn't produce any witnesses. There wasn't an opportunity to cross-examine them. A lot of this bears on what the president's mindset was at the time he gave his speech, whether he intended to provoke violence or not. He said he did not. But that hasn't been explored at all, and I, I don't know what the impeachment managers intend to present unless they expect the, uh, the, the jurors, the senators who were there on January the 6th, to be witnesses, jurors at the same time. I just think uh, it, it, this is what happens when uh, there's a rush to judgment on impeachment like Nancy Pelosi allowed in the House. There is also the fundamental problem that you are a victim. Every senator and every House member who was voting— and I would have voted as you did to accept the results from the states. Uh, every senator is a victim. Every representative is a victim. Nowhere in America do we allow victims to pass judgment on their uh, assailants. Uh, and I'm not calling President Trump an assailant. I'm just saying we don't do that. That's just not yeah, done. This, yeah, this is this is a totally made up process. It's not uh, it's not required. Or it's not allowed. I frankly believe by the Constitution, there's no authority anybody can point to. This is just a raw exercise of majoritarian power in the House to impeach the president. And uh, we're going to hold their feet to the fire in the Senate. Now, 45 votes uh, against proceeding based on one reason or the other. Do you believe that that is the floor for the vote to acquit? In other words, might you grab some of the other five upon presentation of so-called evidence? I think that I think that is possible. But I, I do think the outcome is pretty much clear just like it was during the first impeachment. But again, this wasn't about, this isn't about, and that wasn't about actually removing the president from office or, uh, or uh, this is more about the politics and appeasing the radical left and, uh, and the media who have just simply lost their minds when it comes to uh, anything having to do with President Trump. Now, Senator, I must say my esteem for Senator Manchin and Cinema went uh, much higher yesterday because the legislative filibuster is near and dear to my heart, though it's extra constitutional. It's not unconstitutional, extra constitutional. Right. How secure do you believe it is, given those guarantees, for at least the next two years? Well, I feel pretty confident. Um, I, I'm proud of them for standing up for the institution. As you know, without the filibuster, that guarantees a mere uh, a partisan railroad of votes through the House and the Senate, not much deliberation and very little debate. That's bad for the country, and that's bad for the institution, so good for them. But with a 50-50 Senate, even without the filibuster, uh, there's a lot of tools at our disposal to to uh, insist that we be consulted and that we work together on a bipartisan basis to produce outcome rather than just strictly uh, a partisan uh, a partisan Congress. Uh, yesterday, I believe it was uh, Majority Leader Schumer appearing on MSNBC who said it would be necessary to expand the number of district court and appeals court judges to make up for the Trump era confirmations. Would that ever get through a, uh, a Senate with 50 Republican senators? 
No, it would not. It would not. I think, you know, part of the problem I think Senator Schumer and uh, to some extent President Biden and Nancy Pelosi have is they are promising the sun and the moon to the radical uh, progressive base in their party, and they are not going to be able to, to deliver. And so there's going to be enormous backlash and frustration by the radical left when they realize that with a 50-50 Senate that we're going to have to be consulted. They're going to have to work with us. They just can't run over us. Last question, Senator. I always, when asked to describe myself, say I'm a Rob Portman Republican because I'm from Ohio and am in right. temperament and <laughs> politics exactly like Rob Portman. Can you turn him around on this? This was a shock yesterday. Yeah, it really was. Rob is Rob is an essential part of our of our team here in the Senate. He's smart. He's got great experience. He works well across the aisle with with Democrats. I hope we can. You know, per, perhaps, Hugh, the hardest thing for any member of Congress to, to figure out is when it's right time to leave, and that's an intensely personal decision. I, I'll give it a try, but uh, we're going to miss Rob if he ultimately decides to leave. Do you expect any more incumbents besides Senator Toomey and Portman, two of your real workhorses? I mean, right. just two great workhouses. Do you expect any more retirements from the body? Not to my knowledge, but, you know, Rob was a surprise. So uh, I hope we're not surprised with another announcement. Senator Cornyn, always good to talk to you. Congratulations again. Keep coming back, Senator. Thanks, you.